Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Eric here. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you a step-by-step -step process of how I painted Donatello right back there from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, how he went from an STL file on a computer program to a 3D printed object, and then finally to a fully painted statue. But before we can get to this work of art right here, here's how this art journey all began. So here we have a look at the 3D file inside of the 3D printing program Chidu Box. Uh, this obviously is not the entire model, but I wanted to give you a look at how the parts are set up before printing, uh, which is an art form of its own. It's very crucial to have the parts orientated in the right direction, as well as to know how to add the supports to the parts in order for them to print correctly on the printer. Uh, if everything is not set up correctly, it will fail to print. But once you do have a successful print, here's how that looks. So at this point, his body has already been glued to his legs, but the rest of the parts will remain separate and be painted separately so that it's easier to get into the tighter areas. Before we get to the paint, we need to prime the model so that the paint has something to adhere to. Uh, my choice of primer for 3D printing is a primer called Vallejo Surface Primer and it could be put on using an airbrush gun. So we're gonna prime the model starting off with very light coats and slowly building up to heavier coats until we get a nice even full coverage. And here we are at the next step. Uh, as you can see, he has already been painted green and his front shell has also been painted and masked off for protection. Now, the reason I skipped showing that part is because my last video was actually very similar. It was also another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle project and it was also Donatello. In a matter of fact, it was also the same color greens and browns for his body and for the shell. So in order to keep things fresh and not repetitive, I decided to skip that part. Uh, but if you would like to see how the green paint was applied, please check out my previous Ninja Turtle video, which shows the entire process. I'll leave a link for that video in the top right corner. But just a quick recap, I start off with a base green color, then I go in very heavily with some shadows and highlights so that they're very exaggerated looking. Uh, and the reason I do that is because afterwards I go back in with the base green color and lightly mist it over the shadows and highlights which gives everything a nice smooth blend. Afterwards, if I feel like some of the shadows or highlights were covered up too much, I'll go back in very lightly a second time uh, with the shadows and highlights, this time doing smoother blends. So that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Uh, the shadows and highlights are being applied very heavily, which looks ridiculous at the moment, but you'll see in the next step, I go back in and I reapply the base coat uh, to make it all blend together.
And here I am again going back a second time and adding back uh, a few shadows and highlights in certain areas. And here's how he's looking so far with all the green paint on as well as the front shell. Uh, in the end, I'll go back in and I'll do a little bit more detailed work, but here's how he's looking for now. Working on the arm pads and the knee pads, uh, those were painted on by brush. I used a leather brown color and then the straps were painted black also by brush. Afterwards, I went in with an airbrush gun to add some shadows in between the crevices. Also, to give the black straps some highlights, I went back in and did some dry brushing with a brown color. And here's how that's looking so far. The next step was to paint the bandages. Uh, I used a cool gray color and a beige color going back and forth between the two so that the bandages had a, a weathered look and they weren't just one solid looking color. Uh, like they were brand new. After I got them to the desired look, I went back in with some white and did some dry brushing to bring out the highlights of the bandages. So at this point in the project, we can attach the arms to his body. I'll be using some two-part epoxy. If you've watched my other videos, you'll know I use this pretty much for everything. And I also have tutorials about how to mix the glue and how to apply it. I will leave a link to that video in the top right corner if you want to check that out later on. Uh, it explains everything about using glue and how to apply it.
Here we are at the next step. So at this point with the body mostly done, we can move on to the back shell. Uh, I'm using the same technique I use on all my Ninja Turtle projects. As previously mentioned earlier, feel free to check out my other video called Painting Donatello, uh, which shows this same exact process. But once again, to quickly recap, uh, when painting shells, before putting down any brown paint, I like to use a yellow or orange base coat. Once I have the base coat down, I'll go in and do the shadows. And in this case, I'm using black and the same technique I've used for applying shadows and highlights. Uh, this will be the same. I go very heavy with the shadows because afterwards the base coat will be reapplied on top of it to tie it all together. So at this point, I'm just going around and shadowing all the crevices. Once that is done, I will go back in with the main brown color uh, that I use for turtle shells. And then also previously, I'll go back and add more shadows and highlights uh, once again, this time putting it on more lightly and doing smoother blends. So here's how the back shell is looking. As you can see, it's not as crazy as it was in the beginning. Uh, it's got a nice alternating display of colors depending on how it hits the light. The next step, as I say in all my Ninja Turtle videos, is my favorite part of painting Ninja Turtles. Uh, and that is to put on the character's bandana color. In this case, we have Donatello who wears purple. So we will be putting on the purple using a paintbrush. And then the back sash uh, will apply the purple using an airbrush. And the one thing I like to do when applying shadows to purple is to use royal blue. Uh, it's just personal preference. I just like the way it looks instead of using, for example, a darker purple or a black to do the shadows.
And here's how he's looking so far. He's looking amazing. Uh, when prepping the model before paint, I had already gone in and added magnets to his head and also to the bandana uh, so that they don't break during shipping. Here we are at the next step, which is the bow staff, uh, which also holds the ribbons and sashes of his fallen brothers. Uh, those get attached to the top and the piece is displayed as a flag in the base. And you'll see that later on in a future step. Uh, but for now, we need to make this look like wood wrapped with bandages. So I had already applied the light brown color for the wood and I used a gray color for the bandages. In this step, I'll be using a technique called ink washing. Uh, so basically what happens is an ink is applied over the part, which in this case is the bow staff. Uh, the ink falls into the crevices and it stains it a darker color. And then everything that's left on top is rubbed off. And the end result is you're left with some nice shading in all the little tight little crevices. As you can see, the ink went into all the little cracks in between the bandages, uh, as well as in between the grains of wood, and it's just a really easy, fun technique to quickly shade something. After the ink wash, I went back in with the airbrush and lightly misted uh, the light gray color and the light brown color that I had used on the bandages for his arms, uh, just to keep everything consistent looking. Here's a look at the ribbons which will be attached to the bow staff. It's the colors of his fallen brothers, Raphael, Michelangelo, and Leonardo. This particular concept for the statue is loosely based off the last Ronin story to where only one Ninja Turtle is still alive and the other three brothers have been defeated and died. So Donatello is on his base mourning his loss. Uh, he's all bloodied up. He's all dirty. He's just been through a rough battle. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm adding a light brown color to the tips of all the sashes to give them a, a weathered look as if they've been dragged through the mud. Here's a look at his black belt which uh, will be glued to his waist. When painting small parts I like to use a clamp so it's easier to paint. Uh, and I'm using black for his belt. Uh, it's just personal preference. I like the way it looks. And afterwards, I'll go in and add some brown dry brushing to bring out some highlights on the black. And here's a look at his base. In order to keep the video short and to the point, I skipped over the painting process for this part. Uh, the reason for that is I have another video which shows the entire process of painting this Ninja Turtle base 
as well as the other three Ninja Turtle bases that go with this series of turtles. Uh, it's my video called How to Dry Brush. So if you would like to see the base being painted step by step, please check out that video. I'll leave a link in the top right corner. But as a quick recap, the base was painted dark gray. Uh, I then went in with some light gray using a dry brush to pick up all the highlights of the rock. Uh, afterwards, I went back in with a few different brown colors, also using a dry brush. And if you look closely, you'll notice there's some red splatter, uh, which is for the blood effect, uh, which is actually now our last and final step. So as mentioned, this is loosely based on the last Ronin. Uh, Donatello has lost his brothers. Uh, he's just been through battle and he's almost defeated himself. So he's dirty and he's bloody. But before we get to applying the blood, I just want to point out, if you take a look at his green skin, you'll notice it now looks different. Off camera, I went in with an ink wash. Uh, the same way I did the bow staff, the ink wash gets into all the little cracks and crevices and in this case, uh, the texture of his skin and adds some really nice dimension to the overall paint application. So yeah, going back to the blood, uh, I'm not really going to go too in depth about how to apply blood because once again, I have a video explaining exactly how to apply blood step by step. And if you haven't guessed by now, uh, it, I'll leave a link to that in the top right corner of this video so you can check that out later on. Uh, but basically what I did is I use two different reds, uh, a darker red and a lighter red. The darker red represents old dried blood and the brighter red represents new blood that's fresh and still dripping. Uh, so what I do is I thin down the dark red so that it's very watery and doesn't have much pigmentation. Uh, I then go around and I blot that over the wounds in the sculpt. And what that does is it allows the paint to dry somewhat transparently. And the effect that we get in this case is it looks like dried blood, uh, but you could still see his skin through it. I then go in with the brighter red to do all the drip marks that are still pouring out of the wound. Uh, and then something that I actually didn't do in my last video about how to paint blood is a method for doing blood splatter. Uh, basically the technique is to get a toothbrush or any soft uh, bristle brush, dip the tip of the brush into the paint, and then you're going to lightly flick the bristles so that you get a splatter effect with the paint. Uh, the harder you flick the bristles, the more the paint will fly and the heavier the droplets will be. Uh, so I tend to go back and forth with the pressure until I get the desired look that I'm going for. Uh, in this case, I'm only doing blood splatter on the bandages on his hands. And as you previously saw, I did some on the base already. Uh, I want him to be bloody, but not too bloody to where it looks like a horror movie. It's done. And here's the final look.
Okay, and there you have it. That was just a quick glimpse of how he's looking. I want to get him properly set up with better lighting, so stay tuned for the next video. It's going to be the full reveal of this project with a 360 look and tons of close-ups. The full reveal video is coming very soon within the next few days, so please subscribe if you haven't already done so, so you're notified of all future videos. Please hit the like button and feel free to leave a comment. As always guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next project.